Hey guys, Rafe Jammy here. Uh, if you find it useful, if you like my content, then please do subscribe and smash the like button. Cheers. So other things in your menu, you've got the devices menu. This is where you can set all your things to interact with, including your monsters, your hub devices, your weapon spawners, everything like that. And we'll cover that in another video. Uh, and then you've got your weapons. Obviously, if you're having a fighting game, then these are very important. Um, and you'll have to use devices to, uh, to make sure that your characters are either spawning with them or they're available as pickups throughout the map. Consumables, so this is all the things like your materials, if you want to make a coin collection game, uh, things like the fish, um, grenades, all the throwables are all in this menu here. And then chests, uh, so you can build your own chests using these. So as you can see down the bottom, you've got X to equip, that put it in your inventory, um, or you can add it to chest and then go along to the end there. You can see they're here. Create a chest, press an X, and boom, it's there. Ready for you to place on your map. So that's going to delete that. So then we're moving on to the My Island settings. So you can see here, so I've gone along to the left on the top using L1, and then we've got death different settings along here. So game settings. So these are your real key ones in terms of your gameplay, how the game plays. Um, Voice chat, pretty obvious. So team, all or none. Um, teams, so this is going to determine the kind of game you're playing. If you're playing a free-for-all type game where everyone's against each other, and obviously free-for-all, you can have cooperatives. So if you're doing things like uh, like adventure maps where you're playing against sort of competing, completing different challenges throughout the map, then that's probably what you're going to want. Um, and then, or you can just set the number of teams uh, for your game. Uh, custom is a bit more complicated and we'll get to that in setting the different game modes. Team size, again, you can set the exact number of players you have on each team um, or you can split it evenly. So however many number of people you load into the game with, it will just automatically just divide the teams evenly. Uh, dynamic is a bit more complicated again. So certain game modes say if you want players to swap teams at different points, um, that might be a possibility there or say if it's a, a 1v3 game. Um, that's the, the setting you'll need for that. Uh, default class identifier. So this uh, goes in collaboration with um, your sort of class loadout tools and things from the devices menu, uh, which we covered elsewhere. Uh, revert to default class. Um, so again, this will be de dependent on the sort of game you're playing. But say if you, someone dies and uh, you want them to go back to the class they had at the start of the game, it's set it to player eliminated or at the end of the round if you want them to start the next round. Uh, with the same weapons at the start of the round, uh, things like that. Spawn limit, so this is the number of times you can come back. Um, so spawn limit to one means you're literally, you're loading at the start of the game, but if you die, that's it, you're out. Um, so that'd be for things like, you know, last man standing um, and sort of those sort of types of game. Um, infinite, so if you don't want people to be kicked out of the game for dying too, too often, then just set it to infinite. After last spawn, so again, if you've got a limited number of lives there, uh, you can choose for players to either become a spectator so they can watch the other players play, or they can switch team. Total number of rounds, so each round, you know, particularly if you're playing sort of fighting type games, it's worth having a few rounds on there so that the game doesn't end too quickly. Uh, we'll come to that in more detail in other videos. Uh, team rotation, so that would be, say, depending on where your team spawns. Uh, so if you've got two ends of an arena, you can have them swap for each round in terms of where they spawn. So I'm just going to scroll this down a bit. So end game on match point win. So that's determined by, as it says at the bottom there, causes the game to end when one player or team has won enough rounds that they can no longer be beaten. Uh, team visuals determined. Um, so that's simply the, the color of the the color of the team, and what color your names come up as. Uh, time limit, that's how long you want each round to be. So that's not necessarily the whole game. That's each round. So if you've got five rounds and that's set to five minutes, it's going to be 25 minutes total. And so all these sort of settings here, so this is to do with the kind of game you're setting up. So fastest time wins, so say if you've got two teams competing to complete objectives uh, or get to a certain score, um, it could be that the first team to complete that 
will win if you have faster time wins. All teams must finish, so it might be the case that, say, again, if you've got an objective-based game with two teams, um, the game won't end when the first team wins, so you have to have that disabled uh, and set that to yes, and so the first team can then spectate the second team completing theirs. Win condition, you want most round wins. Um, if you're setting up sort of a, a round-based fighting game, uh, you have it as most score, so that can be sort of a cumulative sort of score over all the different rounds. Eliminations to end. So if you want a real basic game, just disable all these settings up here and simply have it as the number of kills you want to end the game. So kind of like a, a classic Call of Duty deathmatch. Um, say first one to 20 kills and the game will end. Simple as that. Uh, creature elimination. So if you're using the, the sort of monster, the creature spawners around the map, you can use that as sort of a, like a zombie game. Uh, again, sort of Call of Duty zombies is a typical example of that. If you're trying to emulate something like that, and then once they've killed us, once you've killed a certain number of players, uh, creatures, then the game will end. Objectives. So objectives come in all sorts of forms, uh, and these are to do with the different devices and how you set up your game. We'll come to that in, again, sort of uh, different different settings. That will include things like if you're setting up capture the flag, uh, search and destroy. All those kind of games will be objectives to end. Collect items to end. So that's exactly as it sounds. So. You can place coins all around the map, set them to give you a score of one each time you pick one up. Uh, and then when you've collected a certain number of items, that, again, that will end the game. Uh, score to end. So there's different ways you can set score uh, using the devices and the other settings in the game. So that could be based on eliminations. It could be based on completed objectives, capturing a flag, or it can be a combination of all those things. Last standing end get, ends game, so that's as simple as it sounds. So if you've got everyone set, um, you'll have to make sure that your spawns um, are set to one or just a few. So then once everyone's used all their spawns, uh, the last person standing will win. Join progress, so this is simply if anyone joins the game after you've already started it, uh, can they just join in the game or are they just spectating? Um, spawn location. So again, so one of the devices is player spawn pads. So you're going to place those around your map um, potentially, and that'll be where you start at the start of each round. Um, or you can set it to fall from the sky, like you would in a battle royale game. Uh, current location would be so. Say if I came out here now, if I were to start game, I would literally start exactly where I am now. Respawn type. Um, so again, this is going to depend on your game mode, um, so that would be, uh, as it says at the bottom, changing respawn time to wave will cause players eliminated during a certain window to respawn together, uh, and this is set via respawn time settings. Um, so that's literally if you only respawn once a certain num number of your team has died. Post-game spawn location, so this is unique to Fortnite Creative. Um, We'll sort of go through this this later, but essentially you can create a sort of lobby area at the start of each game so that people don't go straight into the map when they're loaded. You sort of all have to load in together and then you start the game once everyone's there. And so this just determines where you finish off after the game. But only allow respawn if spawn pads are found. Um, so this will be something like a checkpoint game. Um, if someone hasn't reached it within a certain time limit or they die before they get there, uh, then you might not want them to respawn. They're just simply kicked out of the game. Auto start. Um, wouldn't worry too much about this. I'd say probably just leave it off in most cases if you're building your own maps um, because it's all that is is when you're loading in from the creative hub, hub into your maps, uh, whether it automatically starts the game or whether you're just going to manually start it or wait 20 seconds or 30 seconds before it auto starts. Uh, the game start countdown, so that's simply after you press start, everyone spawns in, then you're going to have a little countdown before the game actually begins. Vehicle trick score multiplier is as it sounds. You can't really do much with that anyway, so I won't worry too much about that. Keep player-built structures between rounds. So this is particularly if you're having fighting games that involve building. Um, do you want the structures that the players built during the first round to still be there in second round and third round, etc.? Allow out of bounds. They're quite obvious when you play them. The islands are quite big, so I won't worry too much about that. 
and allow spectating on other teams. So if you die, if they're spectating, can they watch anyone or can they only watch their own team? Uh, and these are the scores you can set. So as I said earlier, like if you want to set a certain score to win, you might, you can see here, you might want to set elimination score as two, assist score as one. So people can get can get points, not just from, from one aspect of the game. If you've got friendly fire on, so to yes, then that means you can shoot your own team and damage them potentially, which can cause all sorts of havoc.